understand why we need to transition to low-carbon energy, to avoid dangerous climate change. We understand when we need to, by 2050, but the sooner the better given progressing climate change consequences. Crucial to a sustainable transition is understanding how. The consequences of using conventional energy sources are really well known to us. We have to move away from using fossil fuels. We also, though, need to plan really carefully for getting to net zero. Renewables are going to form the backbone of the future energy system, but we also have to think about how we use land. We need to develop new natural stores of carbon in the land, especially by creating new woodland. And we need to think about where we site renewables in the future. Here in the UK, of course, offshore wind is going to be the real dominant form of the energy mix in the future. But onshore, we also need to complement that with onshore wind, with bioenergy, also with solar. Squeezing all of that into the ways that we want to use the land into the future, our environmental objectives, also our ag agricultural objectives, is a real challenge. So we're going to have to think really carefully about where we site renewables, also the mix of renewables that we can bring together to get the maximum possible advantage. If we don't transition well, if we don't actively take into account the impacts of land use change for renewables, we risk solving one set of problems but creating another. Those aspects of nature that provide us with these really important services are known as natural capital assets. So the key thing we need to think about is where are the most important aspects of nature that provide these services and how do we protect them? And also, how do we balance those against other demands that we have for the land, in particular, land that we want to use to provide fuel and energy? And I strongly believe there is hope. We are absolutely now starting to understand which parts of the land are important for energy, which are important for the ecosystem services. But even more interestingly, how do we combine the two? Is there a sweet spot in there where you can have land for energy, but at the same time we maintain that land for the aspects of nature that are providing ecosystem services that are also important to all of us? The scope for this approach using solar energy technologies is immense, and in the UK we're already applying it. Solar flexibility means it can be integrated into buildings, the landscape, and on water at a range of scales. As well as generating clean power, it is a roofing material, it shades your car whilst charging and creates opportunities for land management to increase habitats for biodiversity, encouraging pollinators, allowing soils to regenerate and even be integrated into agricultural practices like grazing or specialist crops. The UK solar industry is working closely with ecologists and studies are now showing increased populations of plants, insects, birds and mammals on the land set aside for solar energy. Land use change for solar PV could be a force for good, prompting positive outcomes for nature. But to capitalise on the potential, we need to rapidly develop understanding of the ecosystem impacts. This understanding will reveal how co-benefits can be maximised and detrimental impacts minimised through management and location decisions and design innovations. To achieve this, to assure a sustainable energy transition, industrial, political and regulatory frameworks must be conducive and knowledge and insight must be shared and ideally co-developed across communities. We've started on this at Lancaster. We're working across sectors and disciplines to deepen understanding and evolve policy and practice based on scientific evidence. We've produced the Solar Park Impacts on Ecosystem Services tool to inform ecologically beneficial solar park management. We're pioneering research on water body response to floating solar arrays. We're investigating how solar parks can be managed to boost pollinator populations with implications for food production and ecosystem health. We're quantifying the impact of solar parks on land carbon stocks and identifying ways to manage the land to maximise that carbon sequestration. Energy is decarbonising so quickly now and our use of land is changing as well. So we have to plan ahead so that we can accommodate these amazing new clean technologies here in the UK but also at the global scale. Understanding the ecosystem impacts of any decarbonisation solutions absolutely needs a holistic place-based approach because without that what we'll end up with is sorting out a climate change issue 
but creating a land use degradation issue at the same time. So we absolutely must do the two together. Renewable energy is now part of the landscape. The solar industry itself is evolving new practices at a rapid pace. An important part of that is supporting nature recovery. Why we need to decarbonise energy is abundantly clear, and when can't be too soon. Solar PV will play a significant role, and resolving how it can provide solutions to both the climate and ecological emergencies is critical. At Lancaster, we're collaboratively developing globally applicable solutions with all those interested – industry, policy, nature conservation groups and leading researchers. We want to ensure that where solar is deployed, it's deployed well. Crucial to a sustainable transition is understanding how. 